pets, our furry little friends, our cute companions. If you are anything like me, you love animals and you really love your pets. Well, yesterday I was having a crappy day, all right? I had a couple tears rolling down my cheeks. And my dog, Zella, came running right up to me, gave me some comfort. And in that moment, God reminded me like four different times when I've asked him questions over the last couple of years about my dog. Like, God, you better show me her doghouse in heaven because she means the world to me. Or, God, I love it when she gives me kisses and sometimes she'll like graze my lips and I know that's gross, but like sometimes I don't care because I love her so much. Like, what's, what are your, what's your thoughts on that? So in this video, I'm going to share some of those uh, experiences and what God has specifically told me about being a pet owner. Um, full disclosure though, I haven't really done too much theological digging to provide scriptures for your pets being in heaven. Uh, it's 11.20 p.m. I'm flying out to the States tomorrow, so you're going to have to forgive me. And you can write a theological book in the comments below that probably nobody's going to read. Anyways, let's start the video. Oh, what an intro. Hey, my name is Philip Paul, and if you are new here and you like animals, you should go ahead and Hulk smash that subscribe button. Obliterate it. Destroy your phone screen from hitting it so hard, and then turn on notifications because the first 20 to 30 minutes-ish, I don't run ads on my channel. I remember not having YouTube premium. I couldn't stand ads. And so it's a win-win. If you don't like ads, first 20 minutes is on me. Um, let's pray. Have you prayed much today? Honest question, have you? Why aren't you praying that much? You should be praying more. All the legends in Christianity were people who knew how to pray. You should pray more. Let's pray. <sighs> Jesus, you are such a good friend. We will never be more loved than we are right now. And that's crazy. That's so crazy, God. Your love for us is not merited on works. <laughs> Our righteousness is filthy rags. Man, I feel like I was having a good day the other day. And I was just reminded, it's, it's filthy rags. God, we are only uh, perfect in your eyes because of your sacrifice for us. And so I pray that we would just live from the understanding that we are complete in Christ. Lord, I thank you for our pets. I thank you for animals and the affection that we have for them. And our love for our animals is just a drop in the ocean compared to the love that you have for us. But I love that you give them to us to steward, that you give them to us to teach us principles, um, that you give them to us to teach us lessons about life. And I just pray that you would release an increase in the relationships with our companions to everyone that's listening, um, be it our pets or our spouses who act like animals, or our siblings who are animals, everything else. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, amen and amen. This is the first story that I want to share with you. And if you can, put yourself in my shoes. Have you ever been away from, let's just say, your dog or your favorite animal for like a week or two, and then you come home and your dog sees you, and they like spaz out. They run around the yard, they sprint, they run in circles, and guess what? You're super excited to see them too because you haven't hugged them. You haven't had affection from them. Like you're so excited to see your pet when you've been away from them for a week or two. So that's the context of this first story that happened about a year ago, maybe a year and a half. I come home, Zella freaks out. She's running all over. I'm freaking out too. I can't wait to see her. I missed her. And after she settles down, she runs up to me. She's giving me a hug and she's licking my face, right? And I don't even care. I missed her so much. She's just licking all over, slobber everywhere. And I don't even care. I love my dog. I missed her. But in that moment, I was just wondering, I was like, God, I'm asking you a question right now. Is it okay that my dog kisses me? And like, I don't even care if she like licks my lips or my ears or my eyes and stuff like that. Like, I just love her so much. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Can you honestly answer that for me? So 12 hours later, I had a sore throat. <laughs> I kid you not. And I knew that it was God speaking directly to me about that question that I had. Now, look, I didn't get a prophetic word. It wasn't like the clouds parted and there was thunder. But as I got that sore throat and it set in, I was like, Lord, thank you for answering this question. I understand and I get it. So here's the takeaway. I'm not going to tell you it's wrong. I'm going to tell you, though, it's not wise. Okay, it is not wise to let your dog or your cat or your rabbit or whatever animal you have lick your face and lick anywhere on your face and your eyes or your body, like any place where they could actually contaminate or transfer bacteria. It is not wise. It's not wise to let their dog slobber into your mouth and then whatever diseases or bacteria or junk they have could get passed to you. So that's the stance that I am taking and sharing with you. 
If you want to infer that it's wrong, go ahead. I'm inferring it is not wise. Secondly, my principle now has become whenever I'm like getting kisses from my dog, I just lift my head up. She knows that she can like lick my neck. She can kiss my ears, but like anything else, no mouth, no nose, no eyes. I mean, all this stuff, they can get you sick. You can get an infection or something like that, you know? Uh, so for me, that's my principle. That is my go-to clear principle. I absolutely hate sore throats. They knock me completely out. I feel like I can't go anywhere. I can't talk. And then I love food as well. So not being able to swallow delicious food, nah, -uh, not going to have it. So it is not wise to take kisses or any kind of activity where the junk that your pet carries could enter into your mouth and you get that sickness as well. So that's my number one piece of advice. In this world, you do have free will, and obviously God's not going to make you or not make you do anything. That's the whole story of why people have free choices in life, and that's why some people choose to follow Christ, some people choose not to, but we live in a world with sowing and reaping, and if you choose to let your dog kiss your mouth, you might reap sickness as your harvest. So, it is not wise. And you are totally welcome to drop a comment below saying that sickness and disease is not from God, all that great stuff. I agree with you. There's no sickness in heaven, right? And we're called to bring heaven here on earth. Jesus always healed the sick everywhere. He never tolerated sickness. So I'm not saying that God gave me a sickness in that regard. As much as I was being shown that, hey, like, hey, you have free will. And out of your free will, you should act responsibly and you should act wisely. I hope I'm ruffling some feathers. And that's okay. Just keep the feathers away from my mouth. <laughs> Puns. So this is the next story. Remember how at the start of this video I mentioned that I had a little bit of waterworks coming down my cheeks, you know? Well, this is a tearjerker. I was uh, pretty emotional one day and I was hugging my dog. You know, I went to bed and as I was falling asleep and I was talking to God, I said, God, you need to show me Zella's dog house in heaven. Like I need to see it. Like, I need to see it. I need to know that she's going to be in heaven and I need to see her dog house there. The Lord said this to me directly. I kid you not. Like he continued my sentence. As I said, you need to show me her dog house. He said, I'm still working on the fence. <laughs> kid you not, <laughs> you know, hey, I consecrate myself. I walk with the Lord. I seek him and I know his voice. And he said that to me. So quick correction on the exact verbiage that had happened. I don't have it perfectly written down. I typed this up last year. Um, in that context, the response was something about there's currently a fence being built. And then a side note that it had, he's going to even though it's not a requirement. That was what I wrote down. And then the second side note, he is the coolest person ever referring to Jesus. So I'm going to drop that and carry on. As I was saying, God... I need to see her doghouse, man. You better promise me that she's going to be in heaven. He goes, I'm still only working on the fence. You know, he goes to prepare a place for you so that where he is, you may be as well. The entire narrative of Christianity is not about all of your wildest dreams and hopes and ambitions coming true. It's actually quite the opposite. When you become a Christian, you are invited to die to self. Who wants to sign up for that? Well, <laughs> you have to be at rock bottom oftentimes to understand why Jesus has so much to offer you and why he is happy to free you from yourself. Oftentimes we can be our own worst enemies. Our flesh suffocates the spirit of God within us. But Jesus Christ, he is the way maker. And when you invite him into your life and when you say, God, I want to connect to you. I want to have a relationship with you. I admit that I'm a fallen and sinful, broken human being, just like everyone on earth, but you're perfect and your perfection is so good. You love me so amazing and I want to experience that and I want to become a citizen of your kingdom. Dude, when you pray a prayer like that or do this, whoever, it's amazing. It's totally bonkers. This journey is not about our pets being saved at all, but there's so many mysteries of Christ and his goodness is so unfathomably beyond anything we could ask, think, or imagine that there are tucked away hidden treasures in your walk with him that far exceed just pets or animals or anything like that. So this is my plug for Christianity. If you're not a Christian, you should totally give Jesus a try in the same way that you would try many different things on this earth. Some people try drugs. Some people try spirituality. Um, try some Jesus. Taste and see. It's really, really good. Is there a barrier to entry? Dude, I got no idea. Pets are not able to process and comprehend this idea of salvation in the same way that human beings are. It's a totally different story. We are made in the image of Christ. We have a soul, spirit, a mind, all that stuff. And I'm sure with dogs and animals, it's a lot different than that. 
Is there a sense of morality that God uses to judge? Look, I got no clue. And I would actually love it if people dropped comments. But remember, nobody likes a loser who's angry typing at their computer. But if you have some good insights, keep a condensed, polite message and drop it below. But that is the next thing that I specifically heard from the Lord when I was in an emotional place praying and just saying that, God, she better be in heaven. I want to see her dog home. He goes, I'm still just working on the fence. Meaning he hasn't even gotten to the house yet. He's, he's building the fence first. So final disclaimer, as I mentioned at the start of this video, I have not really done a whole lot of theological digging to back up evidence biblically to support what I'm saying. I am a student of the word. I've got a lot of the word memorized. I know the word pretty well, but in this case, I'm just, the ammunition is low. Additionally, I am flying out in about three and a half hours. So there's not really the time that I would usually take to put scriptures to support my case in that regards. As with every prophetic word, you are to test the spirits and you're to test the word. If you have a relationship with Christ, you cultivate that intimacy. You have the Holy Spirit within you. You have the ability to discern spirits. You have the ability to hear from Christ and get your own confirmation. So I would encourage you to do that as well. Lastly, in your walk with Christ, there are going to be times when you get it wrong. You might perceive his voice inaccurately or incorrectly. And I'm not saying that this is the case with this video or my other videos, but it's just part of the journey. And that's why it's important that you have your own independent walk with Christ. But in addition to that, just because somebody is a wrong prophet doesn't mean that they're a false prophet. And again, I'm not saying that about my videos or anybody else's videos, but I am just saying is that it's important to have the right discernment. You can be a Christian and still get it wrong. False prophets, those are actually more often like news reporters and astrologists or an atheistic scientist who is trying to convince the masses that God is not real or that God is dead. Some would even say that doctors who give bad reports, like you only have one year left to live, stuff like that can actually fall into the category of false prophecy and false prophets because it's completely different than what the kingdom of heaven has to say for people. Um, false prophets are not the people on the platforms evangelizing the message of Jesus Christ. Yes, sometimes those people, myself included, we get it wrong, but that does not make us false prophets. We are on the winning team. Now, another one is wolves in sheep's clothing. Wolves wear camouflage to blend in with the sheep. That's the congregation. So it's also important to have discernment who in your church or who in your circles looks like a Christian, acts like a Christian, but is kind of, you know, veering people outside of Christ and steering people away from Jesus. So in conclusion, that is all the time that I have to make this video. I hope that it's been beneficial to you. If so, feel free to like it, subscribe, drop a comment on your thoughts on all this stuff, and we'll see you in the next video.